What's up my stat stars? In this video, we're gonna tackle the 2025 free response question number three. All right, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps me a lot. Uh, let's dive right into this really, really cool and fairly simple probability-based question. All right, so Miss Faye is a manager at a restaurant. To improve the dining experience for her customers, she uses a digital music service to create a playlist of songs that will be played at the restaurant. The playlist contains 1,000 songs of four different types of music, 200 country, 400 pop, 100 rock, and 300 jazz songs. The digital music service will randomly select songs at random from the playlist to be played at the restaurant. Any song could be replayed at any time. Now this question, as we will keep reading here in a moment, focuses on rock songs. We gotta remember 100 of the 1,000 songs are rock songs, and any song could be replayed, which means that every trial, every new song is independent of the next. All right, question A says, suppose one song is selected at random, what is the probability that the song is a rock song? All right, well, that's actually really, really easy. We're trying to find the probability of rock song. There are 1,000 total songs. 100 of them were said to be rock songs. 100 out of 1,000 is 10%. Easy peasy, pumpkin pie, so done. All right, the second question says, suppose two songs are selected at random, what is the probability that they're both rock songs? Now. If they didn't replay songs, it would be 100 out of 1,000 times 99 out of 999. But it's said that any song could be replayed at any time, so it's simply gonna be 100 out of 1,000 times another 100 out of 1,000, 10% times 10%, which gives us 0.01 or 1%. So there's a 1% chance that two rock songs are played back to back. All right, question B. In every one hour period, 20 songs are played at random. And remember, any song could be replayed. All right, so how many rock songs will be played in a typical one hour period? So it wants us to define the random variable of interest to Mrs. Fett and state how the random variable is distributed. So here's what I wrote for that one. I use R for rock. R is the random variable that describes and it represents the number of rock songs played out of 20 randomly selected songs. So that's the random variable. R, how many rock songs are played out of 20 randomly selected songs? And R's distribution can be described with a binomial distribution because the probability of getting a rock song stays the same. It's 10%, it does not change. And it's independent, every song is independent of the next. And we are given a set number of songs and that is 20. So how many of those 20 songs can be rock songs? Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way up through 20. All right, the next question says, what is the expected value of that random variable? Well, we know that if 20 songs are being played in any one hour and 10% of them are supposed to be rock songs, 10% of 20 is two. So in a random sample of 20 songs, it is expected that two of them will be rock songs. All right, question C says, recall that in every one hour period, 20 songs will be played at random. And again, any song can be replayed. Determine the probability that four or more rock songs in a particular one hour period will be played. Now, four or more means four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, drrr, 19, or 20. That's a lot of work for me to show. I don't want to show it. So I'm going to find the probability that the random variable r, the number of rock songs, is greater than or equal to four by calculating the probability that it's less than four. That'd be three, two, one, or zero. That's only four calculations, way easier, and it does say I have to show my work. So I'm gonna show those four calculations and then do one minus that. So here's that exact approach. To find the probability that r is greater than or equal to four, I'm gonna do one minus the probability that r is less than or equal to three. So there's my work for 20 choose three, three rock songs, 17 not, two rock songs, 18 not, one rock song, 19 not, zero rock songs, 20 not, and that probability I calculate to be 0.867. So do one minus that, I get a probability of 0.133 or 13.3% chance that four or more rock songs are played. Now it does say you have to show your work. So a lot of kids are gonna say, do I have to do that? Yes, you had to show your work. But I didn't do any of that work on my calculator. On my calculator, I used a binomial CDF and I typed in um, N, which was the number of trials, 10, and P was the probability of success, 0 0.10, and X equals three. And because I was doing a CDF, it did three, two, one, or zero. That gave me the 0.867, then I did one minus that. But if all you run on your paper is binomial CDF, you might not get full credit. All right, now the second part of part C says, suppose four rock songs are played during a particular one hour period. Does this provide evidence 
that the song selection process was not truly random. Like, would it be weird if four or more rock songs were playing? Justify your answer without performing an inference procedure. So I simply said, no, not at all. The probability, now, if the songs were selectively random, that four or more songs out of 20 is rock is 13.3%. That's not unlikely at all. The probability of this happening is just not that weird meaning it would not be weird or odd if four or more rock songs were played out of 20. So this probability provides no evidence that the song selection process is not truly random. And again, it's kind of like a p-value in a way without doing the whole significance test, but the probability of four or more is just flat out not that weird. All right, that's it for this question. Hopefully you enjoyed it and be ready for question four coming at you.